Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. It's good to see you today. And it's so good to gather and celebrate Emmanuel, our God, with us. We're going to sing songs of joy, songs of our faith. We're going to fellowship together today and have a wonderful time. Will you stand and let's rejoice together. Let's turn our attention now, church family, to John chapter 1. We're going to put these verses on the screen and let's read them together. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive Let every heart be 
singing with us. Do this before you're seated. Turn around, tell someone Merry Christmas, and we'll continue on in our service. Man, everybody looks good tonight. It's so good to see you all. If you can believe it, we're at the end of our Advent season, all four weeks leading up to this weekend where we celebrate the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I gotta tell you, this is so special for me to get to be with my church family on Christmas Eve. Are you guys having a good time so far tonight? All right. No! I'm sorry. Um, I, thought I, <laughs> I thought I heard someone say no really loudly. I must be hearing things. Anyway, sorry. Just uh, getting back on the group here. Okay. Um, well, hey, it sounds like we're having a good time tonight. Not everyone is having a good time tonight. Did you hear that? 
Okay, I heard that too. I'm, I'm not going crazy. That voice sounds so familiar. Uh, I wonder. Machunga, is that you? Yes, it is. I know what's happening here. You got a hold of one of these mics, and Jonathan forgot to hit that mute button. Hey, listen, we're in the middle of something, and you're totally interrupting us. So, if you don't mind... Oh, come out and join you? No, I do not mind at all. No. Men in black, roll me out front and center stage oh. where I belong. Mr. Jordan Weston needs help. Here I am, everybody. Hello and Merry Christmas. I guess everybody, all the way from Kids on the Move, please give it up for Majunga. Thank you. Thank what is this? You. Mm -hmm. Look at this crate, it's all festive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Majunga? Yes. Why are you here? Well, you see, I've been over in Kids on the Move waiting for hours. I was going to have my own musical production, but nobody showed up. Well, that's because we're all here. Look, kids, moms, dad. There's a kid in the front row right there, look. Oh, yes, he's so cute. You know, I thought that was Pastor Lee Martin. <laughs> Listen, uh, this has been planned for weeks, okay? I texted you about this, actually, several weeks ago. Uh, you didn't text me back. Uh, look at my teeny tiny little hands. Do you think I can text? My fingers don't even separate that all right, much. Okay, okay, well, we're here now, okay? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what exactly do you want to do? Well, as you know, my heart, my mission, in fact, is to introduce people to the real Majunga. And what better way to do this than through the magic of song? But because now there's no kids on the move, I have no place for my Christmas sing-along, and Christmas will be ruined, pooey. Majunga, get back up here. Yes. Listen, listen. Mm -hmm. You're not the greatest singer. <gasps> Rude. And on Christmas Eve to say that. However, we're all here. Mm -hmm. We got some time. I think it sounds fun. What do you guys think? You want to sing some Christmas songs on Majunga? Okay. Well, hey, okay. listen. They're in it. Okay. So let's sing some Christmas songs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's pick. Let's pick a good one to start with. Actually, I'm good already. Piano guy, hit it. Oh. Tommy used to work on the docks. What? The union's been on strike. No. He's down on his luck, so tough. No, no, okay, no, no, stop, stop. I, Majunga. So tough. Um, that is the 80s hit, Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. That is not a Christmas song. Well, it should be a Christmas song. It's about prayer. I mean, Gina works at a diner. It's basically the start of every Hallmark movie. No. It's true. Listen, can we, do you, have a, do you have a Christmas song? Like, okay, what about Jingle Bells? Oh, okay, hit it, guys. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Yeah. O'er the fields we go, living on a prayer. No. Bells on bobtail spree, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing, the union still on strike. Majunga. Jingle, jingle bells, bells, jingle bells, there you go. jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't the best, and we almost went south, but we got well, there. You know, we got it. Yes, we got it's there. okay. It's we okay. We got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got there. Okay, so that's fine. It's a Christmassy song. And, you know, Jordan, you, do you know what I'm learning? What are you learning? This whole worship leading thing, it's a lot easier than I thought. I used to think it was an impossible dream, but now that I'm here, it's not that hard. But Jungle, we, we do work hard, you know. <laughs> yes, reading words off a screen is so hard. Listen, listen, can we, can we just get back to the Christmas songs? Oh. You came out here to sing some Christmas songs. Okay, okay. So how about this one? How about this one? <clears throat> you better watch out. You better not cry. Okay. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. John Bon Jovi's coming to town. Not living on a prayer. Because Gina works at the diner. What are you doing? And Tommy's down at the stop, docks. Stop, stop, stop. Majunga, hmm? you came out here to sing Christmas 
songs. Mm -hmm. Are you got a, do you have a Christmas song to sing? Okay, you want a Christmas song? This I want next a Christmas one, song. It is a real crowd pleaser, guarantee. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, George but Michael. the very next day, you gave it away. You gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Special. It's getting a little weird, isn't it? That's a little creepy. Okay, yes, that's that's, that's listen, creepy. It's a Christmas song. It's a mm -hmm. step in the right direction. But Jonka, yes. we're already almost out of time. We have time for one more. Do you have just a great Christmas song that we can? Play? Oh boy, do I! Okay. Feliz Navidad. All right, I like this one. Feliz Navidad. Yeah. Feliz Navidad is something. Something police not Come right. on everybody! Sing. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. So we gotta hold on to what we've got. It doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We've got each other, and that's a lot for Give it a shot. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, leaving on a prayer. Take my hand. We'll make it, I swear. Oh, leaving on a prayer. Leaving on a prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our friend Machanga. <laughs> Thank you. Make sure you text Majunga to 23101. I love you, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Check out my podcast, Majunga in Motion, where we talk about everything we're not supposed to talk about. That was an amazing surprise. We're going to continue on with our service uh, with a song. Feel free to stay seated, but you should know this one. Feel free to sing it out with us.
For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her. God has chosen to bless you. You will become pregnant. You'll have a son, and you're to name him Jesus. He will be very great. We'll be called the Son of the Most High. But Mary asked the angel, How can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. While Mary was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her fiance, being a just man, decided to break the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, said the angel, don't be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child in her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you're to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. He will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This prophecy from Isaiah 7:14 was given 700 years before Jesus was born. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born. And at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. 
He traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. That night there were shepherds in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. A Savior, yea, the Messiah. The Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host from heaven, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. The angels left, and the shepherds said to each other, Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they ran to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child, and all who heard the story were astonished. But Mary kept these things in her heart, and the shepherds went back to their fields and their flocks, glorifying and praising God. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And at the same time came wise men from the east of Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star that arose and we've come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by the question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where do the prophets say the Messiah will be born, he demanded. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judea, you're not just a lowly village of Judah, for a ruler will come to you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. This prophecy found in Micah 5 and verse 2 and 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2 were both written 700 years before Jesus was born. So Herod sent a message to the wise men asking them to come and see it. At this meeting, he learned the exact time of when they had first seen the star. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem, search diligently for the child. And when you find him, come and tell me that I may go and worship him too. After this meeting, the wise men went on their way, and once again, the star appeared to them to guide them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them, and it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother were, and they fell down, and they worshipped him. And they opened their treasure chests, and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went home another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod will try and kill the child. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death, fulfilling what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Herod was furious. 
When he learned the wise men had outwitted him, he sent soldiers to kill all the baby boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him that the star had first appeared to them about two years before. Then later, when Herod died, God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those who wish to murder the child are dead. So Joseph obeyed. He arose and took the child and his mother and he re-entered Israel. When he heard, though, that Herod's son had taken over as king in Judea, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arriving, he settled in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the words of the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the story of Christmas.
Christmas, everybody. How many of you, it's now officially Christmas because you heard my dad read the Christmas story? I mean, come on, right? And you heard Andy sing, Oh Holy Night. How about that? Wasn't that so good? So good. Hey, have a seat for me. Did you get the elements of communion when you came in the door? I hope that you did. If you would, reach down and grab them. If you want to start fiddling with the plastic piece on the top, see, so you can get that little piece of styrofoam out of there. They tell me that it's bread. I'm not convinced. <laughs> when, when I was asked to uh, lead us all in communion tonight, my first thought is, wow, what do, what do Christmas and communion have in common? Because maybe you, like I do, associate communion with Easter. It's about the death, the resurrection of Jesus. How does it connect to Christmas where we're talking about his birth, but it has everything to do with Christmas? Two things I think Christmas and communion teach us. The first is that God is with us. See, when you're taking communion, you're taking the body and blood of Jesus. We believe figuratively, but there are some traditions that believe literally you're taking the body and blood of Christ into you. Jesus said, when you do this, you're doing this in remembrance of me. You're remembering that Jesus came, that he came close. And what could be closer than having Christ literally dwelling within you, that's what this means. It means that no matter where you come from and what you've been through or what you're feeling this Christmas season, you're not alone. It means that the God of the universe sees you. And you may feel like you're all by yourself, I assure you, you are not. You have a heavenly Father who sees you knows you and loves you right where you are. That's what Christmas means, that Jesus did not stay at a distance, but that he stepped into our world. He came close. That's what this means. The second thing that Christmas and communion teach us is that God is also for us, because see, these elements represent sacrifice. That's what it means when we take the body and blood of Jesus. We're remembering that his body was crushed so that we could be healed. We're remembering that his blood was shed so that we could be forgiven. As Paul would write in the book of Romans, he says, how could God, if when he offered us Jesus, how could he not also along with them graciously give us all things what that means is that, look, if God didn't spare his own son, if he was willing to give us Jesus, what more could he give? The gift of himself is the very best thing that God could give. There's nothing better. Because you see, all good, all life, everything that you love, all of the good parts of life, 70 degree days in December, all the good parts of life, they come from God. Everything good and perfect comes from him. And that means that when he gives us himself, he's literally giving us the very best that he can give. Here's what I can tell you. I can promise you that your sin is no match for his grace. Your past is no match for his love and his sacrifice. These elements remind us that the God of the universe is so utterly and completely committed to us that he spared nothing to buy you and I back to make a way so that we could be in relationship with him. And so it's all together fitting tonight, this week, that we take communion together. 
to remember not only that Christ came, but that he came and he died so that we could be healed, whole, and alive. If you would, go ahead and grab that piece of bread out of there. We're going to take it together. It represents the body of Christ broken so that we could be healed. Do you need healing inside or outside? Either way, he is a God who heals. Let's take the bread together. The cup represents his blood shed for us so that we could be forgiven. Forgiven. What news? Let's take the cup together tonight and remember that we're forgiven. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you came close that you did not keep us at a distance, you did not wait for us to find you, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you for loving us so completely. Lord, we remember you. We remember that you came and we remember your sacrifice this Christmas Eve. Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, if you've been journeying with us through Advent, you know that um, Part of the tradition of Advent includes the lighting of candles. We wrapped up our final Advent gathering at our house this past Sunday night with the families that we've been celebrating with, but we thought it all together appropriate tonight, as many churches do on Christmas Eve, to remember the light of the world who stepped into our darkness as we sing Silent Night together. So we're gonna light these candles and sing Silent Night. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna light my candle up here and we're starting to light them around the room. I can already start to see them lighting up. I'm gonna light this one and then I wanna light one down here on the front row. B, Zoo, you wanna come over here? I'll light your candle for you. Stay there, there we go. Come on over here. Let's light these. Ah, hang on, let's try that again. You know what? Let's try this. (laughs) Guaranteed to work. Awesome. Let's sing Silent Night together. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
You can go ahead and blow your candles out. This is our last service of the year. Our next service will be on January 2nd in person. But we just wanted to say at our last service, thank you. Thank you. We love you. Merry Christmas. You guys have been amazing this year. And I know that this year hasn't been all roses for everybody. But I'm proud of our church. I'm proud of our church family. And I'm grateful to God for what he has done in us and through us this year. This has been a difficult year for so many of us. We've experienced heartbreak, loss, disappointment. We've experienced birth and weddings and joy. And throughout this whole year, we know that the Lord has sustained us. He has. He's been so faithful that around every corner, no matter what we were facing, he met us with his mercy, his love, hope, peace, joy, carrying us through. So tonight as we go, Wit, would you lead us in final blessing? Yeah, the final blessing of our year. Let's put it up on the screen. We close all of our services. If you're new with us this week or tonight or maybe here out of town with a family member, you can feel free to join along as we say this over our lives, over our families, over our year. Let's say it together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you, Church on the Move. Have a Merry Christmas. We love you. We'll see you next year.